And we're here today to talk about the Industrial Internet of Things or IIoT systems in distribution. At Visual Decisions, we've been in the business of utilizing information from the shop floor to improve continuous improvement since about 2002. We help our customers combine the smart factory and the lean factory to drive improvements to cost throughput and quality. Our customers have seen dramatic improvements such as 30% increases in OEE, 50% scrap reductions and much more. Uh, but just like wearing a Fitbit won't automatically make you thin, implementing technology for Industry 4.0 won't automatically make the business better. The culture of the organization and the business processes must be adapted to take advantage of the new capabilities to drive real improvements. This is why we have a unique approach to work with our customers to adapt the processes uh, to take advantage of the new capabilities and help establish a true data-driven manufacturing culture. So uh, as a quick procedural note, if you have questions during the presentation, please enter them into the Q&A and I will get to them at the end of the webinar. Uh, the goal for today is to explore the use of IoT systems in distribution environments. So IoT devices help reduce the use of manual labor, incidents of errors, and increase the speed of processing goods. Uh, warehouse errors are costly, uh, inaccurate operations and errors require more labor to remedy, adding unnecessary costs. With the deluge of uh, data available from IoT devices, including wearables, um, other supply chain uh, devices, um, now we have uh, vital insight into inventory and uh, the supply chain as a whole. And that data can be used to drive more efficient uh, processes, more efficient warehouses, and provide insight that helps to keep uh, the cost down. So there was a uh, Zebra study in 2020 that looked at what are the top 10 technology investments in warehousing. And at number one in that list um, was the Internet of Things. And I, that is a fairly broad subject, but you know, other things on the list were barcode scatting, uh, tablet computers, big data and analytics, uh, warehouse truck loading automation, advanced imagers and cameras, mobile thermal printers, uh, stationary print label printers, wearables, and RFID. And pretty much every single one of those can be involved in an IoT system within warehousing. So when we look at some of the key trends in warehousing and distribution, um, we can start with end-to-end -end inventory tracking. And uh, fundamentally, this is you know, from the product's arrival at the warehouse to its delivery. Um, you want to see continuous updates on the status, the location, and uh, anything else you know, about that inventory. Um, we're seeing you know, things with uh, drones as kind of an extreme example. Uh, you know, flying around the warehouse and, you know, either monitoring uh, inventory status on the different shelves, or even uh, we're now getting to the point where drones can actually pick uh, and uh, deliver. Now, there aren't a whole lot of warehouses that are doing that yet, but um, automatic vehicles and um, automated uh, robots are certainly uh, you know, much more common uh, within the facilities and uh, help to increase productivity. Um, blockchain tracking uh, is in use in some places to uh, help, you know, keep that detailed certification. Uh, you know, vision picking is becoming uh, very popular in terms of utilizing augmented reality uh, systems in order to help employees uh, effortlessly pick and transport items to a different zone in the warehouse. And so there are many different things that are happening. So as we look at these and what are the essential elements in putting all of this together, uh, we can look at, uh, break this down by equipment, network, security, uh, the IoT platform itself, analytics, and then some applications and some data. So when we look at the equipment uh, that gets used and, um, yeah, I'm primarily looking at uh, the kind of either input devices or you know the smart displays. Uh, you can look at uh, things like RFID, 
uh, or barcode readers to uh, track uh, the materials. You can uh, look at things like rugged tablets or mobile computers, uh, wearables, uh, smart glasses to uh, be able to see that information and so forth. Uh, the vision systems are another uh, thing that you know, provides input into the system. So being able to look at the items going by on a conveyor and so forth. And then just a whole bunch of sensors. Uh, whether that's uh, temperature or humidity sensors to uh, you know, get the ambient environment, uh, vibration or motion or vibration sensors or noise sensors uh, on motors to be able to uh, detect when preventive maintenance or maintenance might be required, uh, motion sensors, uh, photo eyes, et cetera, uh, to be able to control the process. When you look at uh, you know, the network that's required in order to make all of this work, uh, there's really three choices that are out there primarily today. Uh, one is a wired. And in the case of a wired infrastructure, it's uh, you know, very highly recommended to use uh, CAT6E uh, cabling and gigabit connections uh, due to the amount of data that you might have uh, to avoid network bottlenecks and or latency. And if you're going wireless, um, you know, you certainly need to put, you know, all the bandwidth in place and, you know, have enough uh, reception points that uh, you can make that seamless as things move through the facility. And then 5G is uh, a new option, but uh, provides immense capabilities for connectivity throughout the facility. Uh, as you're looking at these different network options and putting uh, hundreds or potentially thousands of devices on the network, uh, you really have to pay attention to security. And uh, as you're doing all of that, uh, you have to think through um, how's the data going to be protected while it's in transit. Um, you have to look at uh, the data repository and making sure that that can guarantee that only the right people and systems have access to read and write the data. Uh, from an authorization perspective, and then uh, being able to look at uh, the security of the IoT ecosystem itself and uh, the maintenance that's required to uh, address and correct system uh, vulnerabilities. And the IoT devices themselves, um, you know, if they, uh, you know, have password requirements and so forth, making sure that all of those are secured um, in addition. Uh, the IoT platform itself, um, there are a number of different choices out there, uh, including PTC, Amazon, IBM, Microsoft, and more. Uh, for you know, what we are doing with clients, we have found uh, that the PTC platform uh, works extremely well. Uh, from an analytics perspective, uh, you want to be able to maintain real-time visual controls out in the fact or on the factory out in the warehouse and that includes uh, giving people feedback so that you know as they're doing their job uh, they have the information that they need uh, right in front of them at all times uh, then uh, being able to look at that historical information be able to spot trends uh, look at um, you know preventive maintenance and so forth uh, through uh, maybe a business intelligence interface uh, such as Tableau or Power BI or Click. And then also having the artificial intelligence or the machine learning capabilities from an analytics perspective uh, to really analyze and predict uh, things like maintenance uh, requirements and so forth. So putting all of that together, uh, being able to uh, pull information in from uh, various sensors, uh, whether it's uh, vibration for different motors or temperature or noise or you know, vibration or whatever it might be. And uh, then you know, having the control uh, network uh, push information into the system or have information pulled from uh, those devices, for instance, uh, the PLCs on you know, conveyor belts and so forth. Uh, being able to combine all of those different sources of information is what an IoT platform should be strong at. So with kind of all those basics uh, completed, um, 
looking at some of the use cases that we can put in place. Uh, we have uh, vision picking and uh, smart glasses enable the warehouse laborers to work hands free. Um, ideal uh, when they're, you know, you have busy warehouse operations. Uh, the augmented reality provides essential information regarding the process and helps warehouse workers uh, to learn quickly as well. Uh, so you can reduce the training time. Um, you know, popular with, you know, order picking itself, uh, those smart glasses um, help achieve productivity improvements of, you know, 15% or more. Um, and uh, warehouse workers can see visual displays of the picking instructions and information on item location in the visual displays of the smart glasses. Uh, the glasses themselves help show warehouse worker uh, where the item needs to be placed on the cart and so forth. And so uh, these things can lead to much greater picking accuracy, uh, improved picking performance, as well as better ergonomics. Um, I know on the display, I put a picture out there of the uh, tablet, but just imagine the tablet wasn't there and you were seeing that through the glasses themselves. Uh, looking at asset health and uptime uh, within uh, the warehouse is another big use of IoT systems. And it's really more than just predictive maintenance. Uh, if you look at uh, getting information from, you know, for instance, uh, the lift trucks here, uh, you can, uh, when you have a problem, uh, respond in a reactive manner much more quickly uh, by getting those alerts to the right people, having the location sensor uh, on that vehicle so that you know exactly where that uh, look, uh, vehicle is when it's having a problem and get somebody out there. Uh, from a preventive maintenance uh, standpoint, it's much easier to track uh, the you know total movement with these systems and understand uh, when some of those PM activities need to be done based on the schedule. And then looking at uh, you know the information coming from uh, these uh, devices themselves, whether it's uh, you know lift truck or whether it's an HVAC or you know. Uh, conveyor or you know an AMR or anything else, uh, being able to take that information and uh, look at uh, the trends and so forth, and do correlations between uh, when failures occur and you know what those uh, signals look like, and then being able to put the predictive analytics in place in order to say that we're likely to have you know this type of a failure within the next X number of hours or days. And so this can be done again on lift trucks, on conveyors, on uh, HVAC equipment, um, robots, uh, guided vehicles, et cetera. Um, cold chain certification. Uh, this is looking you know, at the uh, distribution uh, as a whole, uh, coming all the way from the factory uh, through, uh, you know, any trucking or shipping uh, through the warehouse itself and, you know, out to the point of use and being able to ensure uh, that those uh, items are, you know, stored at the appropriate temperature at all times, uh, being able to put those sensors in place along with those uh, items and being able to maintain communication with those things at all time and being able to alert, you know, as you get next uh, near a temperature threshold, but also having the certification that those items have been below that temperature that entire time uh, can be absolutely critical as we're seeing with the virus distribution today. Uh, coming back within the warehouse itself, uh, being able to uh, monitor the environment uh, in the warehouse uh, obviously, it's critical uh, for food storage and things like that, um, but it's also very important for electronics and a number of other things where uh, they're very sensitive to either uh, temperature or humidity. And uh, what you can do with these uh, devices is not only just have a single thermostat within the room to make sure that the room as a whole or that one point in the room is meeting its uh, temperature standard, but you can actually put the temperature sensors uh, throughout the room in different strategic locations so that you can identify any cold or warm spots and fine tune the ventilation within that environment.
uh, within uh, the connected dock. Uh, you can have load sensors on the leveler uh, so you can monitor the traffic in and out of the trucks. Uh, so as you're removing loads or putting loads into the truck, you can you know, monitor every time that you're passing over the leveler. Uh, you can have photo eyes over the dock door uh, so that you can track when a truck is either present or empty. And this can help you combine information with the fork truck data to understand you know, when you have inefficiencies in your load and unload events. So you know, I, I should understand uh, based on the size of a load within that truck, if it's a full truck load or if it's a LTL, um, you know, how much I need to unload or load and how long that should take. And uh, by monitoring, uh, you know, when the truck gets there, when the truck leaves, and what the traffic looks like in and out of there, I should be able to, uh, you know, really understand where are my inefficiencies in that load and unload process, and what are the contextual clues that it depends on. So, does it depend on, you know, what I'm moving in and out of there? Does it depend on who is doing the unload and unload or load and so forth? So those are all types of information that I can collect. Uh, connected vehicles, we've uh, talked uh, some about this already in terms of um, you know, the mobile robots, uh, being able to uh, look at the control system itself, uh, the navigation sensor, um, you know, how it interacts with humans, and you know, the AMR's ability to uh, bring material from, uh, you know, it, from humans within a narrow picking area, uh, you know, placing the uh, item with the AMR and having the AMR uh, bring the material back to the uh, central area. Um, automatic guided vehicles have been in use for you know a number of years now. Uh, telematics equipped lift trucks, uh, you know, uh, pallet jacks, even something as simple as a pallet jack can have a location sensor on it, so that uh, you can do some location optimization. And you can uh, you know, track all the movements and you can uh, measure efficiencies for you know, the inventory locations, the inventory groupings, and also the asset resting positions. So when you're done with a pallet jack, you know, where do you leave that? And what is the best location to leave it? Is it just wherever you know, the point of drop off was? Uh, do you return it to you know, a nearby location that is more central? You know, how do you optimize those things? Um, you know, this can also provide a heat map of usage by different times of day, uh, you know, and again, you know, providing strategic locations for these things, uh, you know, safety in terms of, uh, you know, location sensing and so forth, and uh, being able to understand where you might have low ceilings or obstructions, uh, having virtual fences or restricted zones in place and so forth. Uh, looking at utilization of all of these different things and uh, the route efficiencies, how many fork trucks do you need, um, you know, look, minimizing your maintenance expense by minimizing uh, the travel, uh, how many drivers you require, you know, all of those different things can be uh, collected or uh, derived when you have this information on those connected vehicles. Um, so I touched on a couple of these on the last slide, but some of the different measurements and analytics that you can put in place uh, for the lift trucks, uh, you can look at the efficiency of that, uh, the route efficiency, the load efficiency. Um, do you have a lift truck that is basically being used as a commuter vehicle? So, um, you know, it's doing a lot of its travel without any load, you know, on that. In which case, can you swap out, you know, that lift truck or provide a different vehicle uh, or a different way of moving around the plant or just let people know that they need to walk. Um, you know, how much deadheading do you have? So uh, movement without, you know, having a load on there. Um, do you have variation based on who's driving uh, those fork trucks uh, for, you know, what the efficiency looks like based on the driver or the operator? And then how do you right size the different fleets based on uh, the information that you see? Um, looking at some of the automated material handling systems and, uh, you know, the information that you can get from those. So, uh, certainly with conveyors, um, every conveyor uh, that I've come across is run by a PLC and you can get information from that PLC, you know, about uh, the material movement on that conveyor, 
uh, the speed and everything else, but you can also hook up uh, vibrations, uh, sensors, noise sensors, uh, voltage sensors, and so forth to the conveyor in order to be able to diagnose uh, issues uh, with the conveyor itself. Uh, you can look at the sorters and you know how you're doing the sorting of the goods and so forth. And I'll touch on vision systems in a minute here. And uh, you know, looking at things like the barcode readers, the photo eyes, uh, RFID tracking, you know, as you're uh, doing the material movement, and going into the sorters and so forth, are all different things that you can uh, plug into that IoT system to help you know optimize, analyze, and control, as well as just getting the transparency of the different uh, systems within there. And then being able to combine that information from, uh, you know, your conveyor movement with, you know, your picking and your shipping and being able to see the complete flow and how fast things are moving and where you might have dead time uh, for these items. Um, the vision systems themselves and being able to identify uh, automatically, you know, instead of doing a visual inspection, you know, as things are uh, going through. Uh, being able to, you know, utilize a vision system to identify where you might have an open box or re where you might have damaged boxes and so forth, or, you know, damaged items in the first place. And then uh, for those warehouses or distribution centers where you either have a light assembly operation or you might have uh, picking and packing uh, taking place. Uh, you know, there are a number of opportunities there to uh, utilize IoT systems to uh, you know, track the uh, labor efficiency, uh, the number of stations, the number of workers, uh, the throughput through those, uh, what your on-time performance looks like, uh, being able to uh, look at it for training and, you know, who is trained for what task, who does what jobs, um, identifying where additional training might be required. Uh, what is your time to proficiency? Um, all of those different factors can be looked at. Um, I always hate to bring it up, but you know, employee theft, uh, being able to tag the high value parts and so forth and reduce your inventory losses there. And then you know, just quality certifications and things like that as well are very important to be able to track. Um, in addition, uh, we do have customers in uh, the high tech space where uh, it's important for them to be able to look at things like static discharge and make sure that employees are grounded, you know, as they're at their station and uh, doing their tasks. So uh, if we look, start to look at some of the benefits that are associated with all of this, uh, certainly from a monetary perspective, uh, there are a number of different monetary benefits, um, being able to prevent uh, damage or spoilage or at least uh, mitigate or limit uh, how much of that you get uh, based on uh, having the HVAC monitoring, being able to look for uh, cold spots or warm spots uh, in the environment, um, you know, getting the alerting in place so that as things are trending out of control, you can uh, take pro proactive steps and uh, keeping things within the proper environment, uh, improving your asset management uh, so that uh, you have to, you can minimize the amount of uh, money that you have tied up uh, within the equipment and you know keep your fleet to a minimum while still serving all your needs and so forth. Um, improving your service levels and you know being able to ship things on time. And then also just being able to do all of that at a you know, cheaper and faster uh, cost. Uh, certainly from a transparency perspective, uh, IoT systems are going to provide a ton of transparency for being able to do the real-time product tracking, uh, being able to pull in, whether it's RFID data barcoding, uh, you know, pulling information in from the control systems of you know, the different uh, robots or you know, devices that you have out there. Uh, and you know, being able to see the real-time status of pretty much all of that. Uh, being able to look at the inventory levels um, in real time, uh, whether that's you know, how I started off with the drone flying around the warehouse and you know, being able to see where you have uh, inventory on different shelves and so forth, or whether that's just being able to track more accurately uh, the movement of material and you know, what is remaining. Um, you know, all of that transparency is available as well as uh, tying into the greater supply chain uh, visibility and being able to 
uh, implement that IoT system across the entire distribution chain. From a human perspective, um, you know, being able to uh, do some task automation and you know fight talent shortages. It's often just hard to hire and uh, retain people uh, within either a manufacturing or a distribution environment. And uh, being able to you know have more productivity per person certainly helps uh, being able to retain people and um, have them be um, you know covering your needs. So uh, kind of flew through that presentation today. There was a lot to cover. Um, but I do have a couple of questions here. Um, on RFID, I, actually, this is more of a note. Um, so we are partnered at Visual Decisions with uh, some RFID uh, providers. And uh, one of them online uh, let me know that uh, there are some new chip production techniques that will lower the price of RFID tags this year. And uh, so uh, certainly the capabilities with uh, RFID are, you know, tremendous within a distribution and warehouse environment of being able to track the movement of a variety of different things, but primarily the materials themselves. And, uh, you know, it has been cost prohib prohibitive in certain environments. Uh, but if the costs are coming down, uh, then certainly that makes it much more appealing. Uh, any other questions here today? All right. Well, with that, I thank you for your time. I will be posting uh, this presentation up to uh, visualdecisions.com as well as YouTube. And uh, if you would like a copy of the presentation itself, uh, that will also be available online on my website. Thank you very much. And I look forward to following up with each of you. Bye.